Welcome to a new video from Excel Data Analysis Series PQB Power Query Basics. This video PQB01 Introduction to Power Query. In this video, we are going to try to answer these three questions. Why Power Query? Where we can find it in Excel? And how Power Query Editor works? So before jumping into Excel and starting our practical example for today, let's have a quick discussion around these three questions. First one, why Power Query? There's a lot of reasons why we should use Power Query. However, I'm listing only three reasons here. First one is because Power Query will help you to extract data from almost everywhere text files, CSV files, Excel workbook, folders, web and online services, relational databases such as Access, SQL, and many, many other sources. The second reason is Power Query will help you to automate your work without using VBA or macros. And that's why, because in the Power Query editor that we are going to see in a while, you will find a section called Applied Steps. And in this section, you can find that all the steps that you applied to your query is recorded and you can reuse it again and again either in the same data set or on another similar data sets. The third reason is with Power Query you are no more limited to the 1 million rows limits in the normal Excel sheet and guess what? You should not also worry about the performance of your Excel sheet. You know that if you are working with 30 or 40,000 records in the Excel sheet with a lot of formulas like sum ifs and VLOOKUPs and all this stuff, the performance of Excel is very slow. However, with Power Query, I promise you, you will not be worried about the performance, even with an excessive or massive uh, number of records. Now we want to answer the question where we can find the Power Query in Excel. It depends on the version that you are working with. If you are working on Excel 365 like me, you will find the Power Query in uh, the data ribbon, you will not find the term Power Query itself. You will find something in the data ribbon called Get and Transform. And in this section, you will find everything that you need about Power Query. This is pretty much similar to Office uh, 2016. Also in the data ribbon, you will find a section called Get and Transform. But if you are working in Excel 2010 or 2013, you need to download the Power Query add-in and install it. And in this case, you will find in a different ribbon called Power Query and all the icons, you can see it here in the Power Query ribbon. And finally, how Power Query Editor works. The Power Query Editor is working in a separate window. This is the window of the Power Query Editor. And we are going to take a, a quick orientation while working on our practical example. But you need to know that the Power Query Editor is working in a separate window. You cannot work in your Excel workbook while working on the Power Query Editor. You have to close it first and then continue working normally in your Excel workbook. In our practical example today, we have a small set of data. It comes in column B, as you can see here. It is also a sales data. You have here the dates, you have the amount, you have the percentage, and also you have the sales rep name. But all of this data, as you can see in the formula bar, all of them coming in the same cell. And there's a separator or delimiter between each um, kind of data. So the dates, and then you have a space, semicolon, and another space then the amount, space, semicolon, space, and so on and so forth. And what is required? We are required to prepare a pivot table, this pivot table reporting the sales by sales rep name. As you can see, we have here the data for the year 2017, but also we have here another set of data for 2018. So let's start directly with the Power Query. But before start working with Power Query, I need to transform this data into a table format so it will be easy for Power Query to understand what kind of data exactly. So while selecting any cell inside the data set, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control T. It will open a small dialog box confirming the range and ask you if you have headers for this data. My answer is OK. I'm going to press on OK. And you can see the set of data changed to table format. In the table design ribbon, I need to give a name for this table. And this is very important while working with Power Query. You need to make sure that you are giving a meaningful name for every table or every set of data. I'm going to call this sales and enter. Now I'm ready, I can go directly to data ribbon and here from get and transform section, I'm going to use this shortcut 
If I hover over this shortcut, you can see here from table or range, I'm currently working uh, on a table and I'm selecting a cell inside the table. So Power Query will understand exactly what I want. I'm going to click on this icon. The Power Query Editor will launch. Now the Power Query Editor launched and there is four main sections in this editor. The top portion of the Power Query is your menus. Start with File, Home, Transform, Add Column and View. We will not discuss each and every menu of these five menus. However, uh, in this example, we are going to use some of these buttons and some of these options and we'll discuss each one of them in details. The second section on the left hand side, there is a, an arrow here. If you click on it, it will expand. You can see this pane called the queries. It lists all the queries that you are working with. In our case now, we have only one query called sales, inheriting the name of the table until you want to change. If you jump into the right hand side, you will find the query setting sections. The first part of it is the properties and you can see here the name, the sales, as we mentioned, we can just call it something else. We can call it something like sales and sales rep and enter. Now we renamed the query and if you look in, on the left hand side you will see also the name changed here and this is the important section as we mentioned at the beginning the applied steps the first step always the source and if you click on it you will see the source of your data where you can see this you can see it in the formula bar pretty similar to excel this is a function called excel.currentworkbook and you can see uh, the name of the table which is the sales and what we bring from this table the content of the table and in the middle is a preview of your data and i'm saying it's a preview because it is a read only version of your data so whatever changes you do here it will not impact the original data although the power query is based on a great language computer language called m code However, in most of the cases, or I can say 95% of the cases, you are not required to write any code. Why? Because this Power Query Editor or this interface, any action you take, it will generate the code automatically and you can view uh, the code in two places inside this editor. The first place is the formula bar and you can see when I select uh, the applied step change type, it generates automatically a function called table to transform column types. And here is the parameter of this function. If I want to view the entire code of this query, I can go to the view ribbon and from uh, the advanced editor uh, button, I can click on it and it will open the advanced query editor. And you can see the code, the entire code of this query written here. Now let's start transformation required for this data. And the first thing I want to do is to just get rid of this action. So I'm going to use this red X and I'm going to delete. The first thing I want to do is to just split this data into four columns. To do this in the Power Query, while selecting this column, I'm going to Home Ribbon. And from Home Ribbon, you go to the Transform section and you will find a button called Split Column. The small arrow here, if you press on it, you have all the options for splitting column. In our case, we want to split by delimiter and our delimiter is three characters, space and semicolon and then space. So there is a standard delimiters here, but not none of them is space, semicolon, and space. So I'm going to use custom. When I select custom, it will open a small window. I can write here space, semicolon, and space, and also Power Query asking you the occurrence of the delimiter. For me, it's for each occurrence of the delimiter. I want you to spread the column at each occurrence of the delimiter. And when I press OK, it will automatically split the data as you want exactly. Not only this, the Excel trying to be smart and there is a change type action taken automatically. This column, the first column is date and you can see the icon changed here and you can see something like a calendar. And if you check the data type from the home ribbon, you will see data type is date. It's also detected that the second column contains whole numbers. However, in this case, I want to change. I want this data to be decimal number, not whole number. So I'm going to tell the Power Query I have decimal numbers here. I can do this action from two places from the column itself, from this icon. I can just click and uh, I can uh, choose the decimal number or from the home ribbon from transform data type. I can just click and use decimal number button. And you can see it is very polite. It is asking you if you want to replace the current step or add a new step. For me, I'm going to replace the current 
step and now you have all the transformation for data done now i want to rename each and every column of this uh, query so i'm going to double click and i can start to write now i think i did all the transformation required for my uh, query or my data and now it's time to load as we mentioned the power query is etl tool extract transform and load now we finished the extraction and also we finished the transformation so it's time to load so to load i have from the home ribbon on the left hand side a button called close and load if i just click on it it will load the data into a excel table however i prefer all the time use the close and load too it will give you this small dialog box and ask you where exactly you want to load i want to load to a table in existing worksheet and this will be f7 and i will click on ok it will produce a new table however this table is transformed the way that we did in the power query as you can see here my table now is clean one i have the date i have the amount the percentage as decimal and also i have the name of the sales rep. and all i want to do is now is to create a pivot table it's very easy while selecting any cell inside the new table generated by the query i'm going to table design and i'm going to summarize with a pivot table it will generate uh, a pivot table i want this table to be in the same worksheet i'm selecting this cell j5 and okay it will create the pivot table automatically and let's drop the amount in the value right click and number format let's take the name of the sales rep on the rows and now you have your report done and all automated by power query in order to prove this is automated let's try to get the new data from 2018 let me select all Control c going back to the same sheet 2017 i'm going to the original table make sure that you are going to the original table not the query generated table i'm going down to the first empty row after the table Control v the table will be expanded automatically and look at this if i select this table right click and refresh the query will be refreshed and you can see the new data for 2018 is coming down here and not only this if i refresh the pivot table as well and now let's take the date in the column you can see here i have the two years 2017 and 2018 and each time you bring new data and refresh your table coming from the query will be updated and your report will be updated automatically that's all for today we try to answer the three questions where is power query why power query and how the power query is working and we saw how we can automate our work our transformation of data with power query without writing any code either in the vba or in the power query m code itself and finally if you didn't subscribe yet to my channel please subscribe like this video and leave me a comment so i can get your feedback and try to respond and thank you very much for your time hope that was useful for you and see you in the next video and bye